All right, hello YouTube. I'm in the dim light because I'm going to tell you guys another true life scary story that happened to me when I was 10 years old. Back when I was a kid, we all used to go uh, camping, fishing, hiking, all sorts of things. And in the Carolinas and Georgia, all us young boys had guns. We had rifles and or uh, pistols, shotguns. And so this is going to sound a little different to you younger folks, but back in my day, I went camping alone in the winter shortly after Christmas one year. I was 10 years old. I had gotten a tent for Christmas, a big bright yellow army tent. Uh, you don't really see these tents much no more, but in movies and such, you see them. Uh, it's got a peak at the top and then two sides going down, and generally they just sleep two people. Well, I had decided I wanted to go camping, and that I did one fateful January late afternoon. So I got out to the campsite where I decided to camp in the middle of probably three or four hundred, maybe five hundred acres of wood. I built me a little fire. I had taken a uh, little what we called Navy fryers down, a little bitty frying pan that the handle would fold on. <coughs> Excuse me, and I, I built a little fire. I had a little bit of uh, uh, butter I had took with me, and I fried bologna and had bologna sandwiches that I had made, and I also had some potato chips with me. So I get down there, and it's, uh, I make the dinner, having a good time, but kind of boring because I'm by myself at that young age. And started hearing noises and started to get a little spooked. But the weapons of choice that I decided to take with me that evening was a 22 semi-automatic rifle that held, I believe, 20 shots with one in the chamber and uh, a little eight shooter 22 revolver target pistol. I believe it had eight shots. It's hard for me to remember, but it's eight shots, I believe. So I had protection with me. And back in those days, we weren't scared to use it. It was a, a different world with different common sense and and uh, people weren't as bad things were nothing like they are today so I laid down uh, the moonlight was shining through the top of the tents the tops of the tent so I could see all of a sudden I started hearing freezing rain well, I was warm enough because I had uh, a nice sleeping bag and uh, stuff I had gotten for Christmas along with the tent. Uh, so I believe I was in two sleeping bags, so I was able to stay warm. Uh, but it started freezing rain, and all you could hear was that rain hit and freezing and freezing. and. Uh, Shortly thereafter, it turned to snow. And that 
clouded the moonlight a little bit, but I still could see through the tops of the tent, through each side. And I'm laying and I start hearing crackling, the crackling of branches. And something on the outside of that tent, five times bigger than my hand said, boom and just had its hand there and then it pulled it back or whatever it was pulled back or fell or whatever and I cocked both the guns had both of them in the sleeping bag with me and pulled the blankets over my head I'll remind you I was just 10 the thought came through my head I need to break the tent down, get all my stuff in my backpack, and go back to the house. But that was a good mile and a half to two mile walk through the woods. So I said, I can't do that. I'm too scared. But something very resilient happens with kids. It can when they start getting tired, they can almost doze off through anything. So as I laid there saying, Dear Lord, please please protect me. Uh, please keep me safe. Let me be able to go home tomorrow. Please don't let anything be out there to get me. And I was a mighty scared 10-year-old boy. So I drifted off. And when I woke up the next morning, for a moment, I was like, oh, it's daylight. Oh, let me see if it snowed. And when I opened the tent and looked out, or as I was opening the tent, I remembered the night before and all the agony and fear that I was in. So I unzipped the front of the tent, peeked out, looped around, and I really didn't see anything. So I thought, oh, this is good. And there was probably a good three to five inches of snow on the ground. I was like, oh, I'm going to go home and get the sled out and... uh, build a snowman, have a wonderful day playing in the snow. So as I went out of the tent and I'm going to brush the uh, top of the tent, something I didn't notice from the inside of the top was that gigantic handprint on the top of the tent. Some snow had fell on it, but some snow had went up from it. So the print was still there. I was like, oh my goodness. And I couldn't make out, possibly due to the freezing rain, any prints uh, that I felt like I could identify. Even at that young age, we were quite learned in the woods. But I packed everything up, I brushed the snow off of there, was looking around, and the woods are awful quiet in in the snow. They are awful quiet. The birds settle down, the chirping and the banging and the movement and the rustling of the uh, branches, they're weighted down by the snow, it's a silence in the snowy woods. It's very silent. And if unless you've experienced it, it's hard to uh, put that silence into words. But I got everything home. I got everything packed up. I rushed home. And that was another one in my tale of three different tales of what we call the Chris Chris monster in the Carolinas back in the 60s up into the early 70s that later on 
had a more famous name that we all in my area didn't know about, which was called Bigfoot. So I hope you guys enjoyed that story. That really happened. And uh, hope you enjoyed the dark mood here. And we hope everybody gears up and has a safe Halloween and a good rest of this month going into Thanksgiving and wonderful holidays. And we send much love to you all. Uh, Christ is King up in here with us, and we hope He is there, up in there where you are. And we hope everybody has a great rest of their weekend.